Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Now I am going to start a dedicated series on clock domain crossing. And when we say clock domain crossing, it starts with the term metastability. So all of us must know metastability before we start going deep into the clock domain crossing. Although in my previous videos, I have explained a lot about metastability. But let us go through this term metastability briefly in this video. Now without wasting much time, let us get started. Friends, in one of my previous video, I have very clearly mentioned that flip-flop and latch both are bistable elements. So when I say bistable elements, that means the output of a flip-flop or a latch can be either logic 0 or logic 1. It cannot be any other value. Apart from logic 0 or logic 1, any other value is an unstable state. So flip-flop cannot stay at that state. It has to come to logic 0 or logic 1. Similarly is the case with latch. But apart from these two stable states, flip-flop and latch both have one metastable state. So let us say if this flip-flop is operating at 3.3 .3 volt, then I can say logic 0 is approximately 0 volt and logic 1 is 3.3 .3 volt. Then the metastable state will be found at VD by 2 that is 3.3 .3 by 2 that is 1.65 volt. So if by any reason this output Q reaches 1.65 volt, then we can say that this flip-flop has entered into metastable state. So when a flip-flop enters into a metastable state, the output of flip-flop is not under our control. So let me explain you how. Friends, to understand the concept of metastability, I have considered this example, where a ball is lying on the top of the hill and there are two valleys. So the two valleys I have mentioned with the name stable state 1 and stable state 2. Why I have mentioned them as stable state 1 and stable state 2? Because if a ball is lying on either of the position, it will be stable and it can stay here for any amount of time. There is no problem. But if the ball is lying on the top of the hill, this state I mentioned as a metastable state. Metastable state is a state which is not a stable state. And it has to drop to either stable state 1 or stable state 2. Now how will it fall? It will fall because there is an airflow. With a very small jerk of airflow, it will come to either stable state 1 or stable state 2. But we don't know. We don't have a control. Similarly in case of D flip-flop or D latch, if a flip-flop enters into the metastable state by any reason, then because of internal noise inside the electronic devices, the output of a flip-flop will come to either logic 0 or logic 1, but we will not have any control. So we always avoid any of the flip-flop in the digital design to enter into metastability state. Otherwise, we will not have control on the digital design and our entire design will malfunction. Now friends, the very important question comes, how can a flip-flop enter into a metastable state and how can we avoid it? Friends, a flip-flop enters into a metastability state if the setup and hold time requirement of the flip-flops are not fulfilled, if the setup and hold time of the flip-flop are violated. So let me explain you how this can be violated. So this is the clock signal and this is the D input to this flip-flop and Q is output. So if we want this flip-flop not to enter into the metastable state, we should fulfill setup time and hold time of this flip-flop. So what I mean to say by this? So what is the setup time? Setup time is a minimum time input need to be stable prior to the active clock edge. So input should be stable before this time so that it can be passed to Q safely without our flip-flop going to a metastable state. But if we vary our D input somewhere here in this region and that means we are not Satisfying the setup requirement of a flip-flop, we are violating the setup time of a flip-flop. The flip-flop will enter into the metastable state. Similarly is the case with hold time. So hold time is a minimum time input 
to be stable after the clock edge. So we need to make our D input stable for this window. So if we change the D input somewhere here in this whole time window, then we are violating whole time of a flip flop. So the flip flop can enter into a metastable state. And once the flip flop enters into a metastable state, we don't have the control on the output. It can be resolved to logic 0 or logic 1. Friends, now I'm going to show you the practical example of metastability. And I have taken this data from Intel's website. So this is the clock signal. And this is the setup time requirement and hold time requirement of a flip flop. And this is the input signal. And you see, I am varying my input signal in the setup window. So I am violating setup time. Now there are two possibilities, possible conditions at the output of a flip flop. This is the first case. And output is started going high, 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 and finally it is settled to logic one. And in the second case, it started going high and eventually it fall to logic zero and it is settled at logic zero. So in this case, it is settled at logic one. And in the second case, it is settled to logic zero. So we are not sure where the value will be settled. Friends, one very important term associated with the metastability is called resolution time. So we know that once the flip flop enters into a metastable state and it has to settle to one of the stable state, either logic zero or logic one. But in how much time? So resolution time is a time from the active edge of the clock till the output gets settled to one of the stable state. But for metastable state, we cannot say how much time it will take to settle to logic zero, logic one. It can be very low or it can be very high. And for your surprise, it can be even more than the time period of the clock. And that is the worst case when it start taking so much time. So I will tell you the methods how to overcome very large amount of resolution times when we will tackle with real time clock domain crossing problems. Friends, although most of you would be knowing it, but still let me go through it. The static timing analysis is done to ensure that setup and hold time requirements of all the flip flops inside the design are met. Why I want to explain it because the term ST or static time analysis is very important in digital design. So we do timing analysis just to ensure that setup and hold time requirement of all the flip flops inside the design are met so that none of the flip flop will enter into the metastable state. And the functionality will be intended. It will be under control. So friends, now I'm going to wrap up this video here. And I hope that this video would be quite informative for all of you. And in future, we are going to create many such videos. Viewers who have not subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it. And to get the notifications as early as possible, don't forget to press the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching.